the key is the brains. We've got the faculty and we've got the students and we've got the bigger community and we're celebrating. There's Mike. I took his course in 1982. He was a wonderful man and he came up with a vision and we translated that vision into our courses and into our um, DNA. Um, you know, the first 10 years, uh, you know, the key, you know, and I, it was funny because we're team scientists, but we went for the idea of hiring the best, most talented, brilliant faculty that we could possibly find. And they're sitting here on the television right now. And uh, we had this multi-omics vision uh, that put us together, uh, that the NCIBI enabled. We, we, we put the academic program at the center of things and our students at the center of things and our curriculum development at the center of things is what we did. And uh, we always are committed to having national visibility and impact and teaming, building a broad team. And obviously the one thing that we did that saved, and Erin and I were talking about this and you hear from her, is we captured the moment with biomedical data science and uh, hired into that and expanded our vision. That was really important. This, this, this um, moniker here was the um, help to inspire that uh, 2011 report, but we were having impact not only in the National Centers community, but the CTSA community and the HCBU community. We were an early hub for all of this here in Ann Arbor, right down the street at Palmer Common. But you know, the future is, um, from, uh, that's the past, you've heard about it, the future is, we're doubling down on the multi-omics, genotype to phenotype, we're putting it on steroids, and we're gonna link it into the phenotypes in a bigger, uh, more um, effective way. Uh, we're, we're gonna uh, sustain uh, and retain our, uh, position our faculty for international and international leadership. And we've already got some great examples that you're here about, and everybody is, uh, everybody's involved with this in, uh, and have become national leaders and are developing centers. Uh, you know, but some of the things that, you know, we're starting in a good place. We're number four in the NIH rankings right now. So we started from zero and we're already there and we're growing. So that's wonderful. And, uh, and thanks to our administrative staff and Mary, our leader, uh, for helping us uh, uh, get all that in on, on time. Uh, but we have threats to avoid and we have to reimagine ourselves in our workplace, in our environments. It's absolutely critical. Uh, you know, so here's a list. This list, forget, what you, I'll show you pictures, but it starts from the hierarchy, from the genome straight down to, you know, through the systems to the phenotype. It's putting this vision that we had, this multi-omics hierarchical vision on steroids and leveraging all the big data and capabilities and consortia and everything else that has now emerged that will allow us to achieve the vision in a, and make the impacts in a fundamentally different way. And the wonderful thing is we are creating this. We are a part of this. We will lead this. That's the idea. And so now let's look at the pictures. You can see all the way down to the new computing. We always like supercomputers. That's how I got into the business. I uh, started as a graduate student and they would call me at six o'clock and say, you want to run your jobs? Take every cycle available in Ann Arbor with our old MTS system. But now, you know, we've gone through the craze and we're to quantum computing. I mean, it's a different world out there and we need to take advantage of it. So, you know, our, uh, the vision that Gil had and that we were um, uh, buying into and uh, capitalized on was the Human Genome Project. But I think most of us know that it was only completed. The genome draft was only completed last year. Uh, Tony, our uh, uh, chair of human genetics is here. We have the whole genome to analyze right now in the T to D project. Um, we have, uh, in, uh, this is the heart and soul of our department here, and I'll show you something in a minute, leveraging the uh, capabilities now of next generation or nanopore sequencing. Alan Boyle's doing it, Ryan's doing it, Indica's doing it, the new faculty member's doing it. We're all doing it, and we'll work with genetics and others to do it to uh, actually understand the relationship between the genome and the epigenome and the transcriptome and all those components that will allow us to understand the cell-specific nature of, of, of the expressions. Uh, you know, so if we look in the crystal ball, 
you know, especially with all the 4D nucleome talent, you know, going from the end code where Alan had such a leadership role in the very beginning and still is a huge player in this to the 4D nucleome, to poor C that Indica is running with, and uh, to the spatial transcriptomics of Josh and Lana is involved here, all the way out with the driving problems. I can see another national center forming here amongst you, our faculty and the collaborators. It will happen. I think you know I keep that crystal ball near my desk at home. Uh, you know, th this is a project that will take all the work that Gil and Alexi and our proteomics community more generally, remembering Phil's contribution, Phil Andrews, to the next level uh, and, and link that to um, cell-specific and tissue-specific expression and uh, link it out to the cancers and other areas which are now being studied in CPTAC, for example. We have several researchers involved in the Human Cell Atlas. Uh, you know, we have Josh, who is doing wonderfully with uh, Liger, uh, you know, in his methodology. Uh, he's in Wyoming today with his family, just had the second uh, child, and everybody's just okay, and he sends his best wishes here. And so we're now, uh, you we're taking it to single cell analysis, and you're going to hear from Steve Parker about this and his great work in a, in a few minutes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, computational neuroscience, and one of the one of the things that's amazing is when you work with the uh, promotion and tenure books, you find out that not only Josh is doing it, but Indica has papers on the regulation of the hypothalamus. We have computational neuroscience, and we're going to keep building in the area. And Ann Dralos just finally signed up her letter. Her husband's in place. Everybody's coming. It starts January 2nd. Good date for the department, isn't it? Uh, you know, multi-scale imaging. This is what I was into for years. You know, all the way from the atomic force straight out to, uh, you know, <laughs> telescopes. Uh, everything in between. And, you know, we have somebody who's working in this area right amongst us in Arvin. It's just absolutely great. Uh, this is an area that we have possibilities to partner with this. And notice how it's hierarchical. The brain's hierarchical. The, the, the imaging capabilities are hierarchical. The multioma capability is hierarchical. This is the idea that is driving us and will continue to propel us forward. Uh, you know, uh, there's a brand new national center just opening up under Caven's leadership at the NSF National Center for Data-Driven Drug Development and Treatment Assessment. Data, good name. That's, in, uh, that's uh, a partnership between DCMB and MIDAS. The MIDAS partnership cannot be underestimated because they were the ones that put the wind in our sails to create the data science and uh, momentum that has carried us forward from about 2015 on. Uh, congratulations, Kaven. Uh, you know, uh, this is uh, stealing a phrase from my uh, former Omen lecturer, uh, Zach Kahani at Harvard University. We and Tony, we need you. We will instrument the system. The source of data for the phenotype that's going to allow us to achieve our vision is our own Michigan medicine system itself. We've had some uh, starts. And oh, by the way, the VA hospital is right down the street. And uh, we not only have to bring those data in, but across the country. And we will. One of the things that's absolutely great, and I encourage everybody to take a hard look, is the All of Us initiative funded by the National Institutes of Health, run by Josh Denny, which has uh, recruited a million diverse participants and have collected the records. There's already 98,214 whole genomes. There will be all the whole genomes eventually. Everybody's been genotyped with good chips. This will help us think about the diversity that we need to bring into our programs. Uh, this is uh, just something from the National Science Foundation. It has to do with automating the workflows. This is something that I was in interested in and worked on in the very beginning when we were thinking, gee, how bioinformatics is about annotation. We need to annotate the DNA and the microarrays and everything coming up. Well, you know, a lot's changed, but if anything, more data is just flowing. And it needs that automated approach. Our own Dan Atkins, founder of our School of Information, chaired this committee, the father of uh, the idea of cyber infrastructure. Uh, Al Hero, my co-director of MIDAS, participated in this and our last OMEN lecturer. And I encourage you to uh, 
read this. You know, when you're working on talks, you start reading the books and like, you know, you don't work in your talk. I really think it's worth looking at. There's our quantum computing slide, the calculations that we're going to be able to do. So maintaining security, privacy, all that kind of stuff. It's going to happen and it will happen. And the Googles of the world and the Amazons of the world will, will see to it. You might not know it. Okay, there's all kinds of things that are enabled by this in biotechnology. Erin Shellman is going to tell us a little bit about her synthetic biology work at Ginkgo Bioworks, the leader of which just went to run ARPA-H. And I think Erin is just going to be, give us an amazing talk about it. Okay, uh, this slide made me nervous. But what keeps you up at night? Well, not the girls who code per se. I'll tell you what, and I'm so proud of the Girls of Code chapter here, which started early. I am so proud of it. And I had a chance to look at the website and go through it. And it's just every bit as good as any course website. It's amazing what you guys are doing over there. It's just great. But you know what? Two days ago, four books were banned from the Girls Who Code Consortium. You know, and then I looked into it. It's probably some other shit I know hold of it. You know, and maybe they weren't banned from Pennsylvania, but if you drink deeper, they were banned in Oklahoma. Well, other things like the capture in the rye are banned and of mice and men. This is dangerous. And we need to speak up and stand up for what is right. And girls who code is right, period. We all need to remember that. Okay, hold on. One of the best times I've had in all the retreats was the last retreat. And uh, Ryan knows I stay, usually I leave, I stay to the bitter end. And uh, there was this talk with these two guys. It was the coolest time that I've had in like 10 years. It was so fun to learn about their journey. And you know, if you look around, we have lots of Asian students. We have lots of Asians. These are Chinese. We love China. We love Chinese students. We love Asians. We love everybody. We are embracing the future of this. But you know what? There's racism in this country. You know, I attended the uh, talk by Ann Lynn, who kicked off the region, who was directed, named director of the Liebenthal Robo Center last week, Chinese Center. And I saw the slide, and you know, all the people who were brought in from China, faculty member. And I looked at that slide and I said, you know what? I did every one of those things pretty much. Nobody called me on the phone. And then I do not, this is Ann. Here's a survey amongst all our Chinese staff in the University of Michigan. You know, I do not feel safe. 60% anti Asian violence. Is that it? U.S. government investigations, worry about home. We need to sensitize ourselves to this and say, we do not accept it. We cannot accept it. It's impossible. Wellness, we talk about wellness, markets and wellness office. 47% find it difficult to concentrate or be less productive. There's the number amongst our own staff. Let's think about it. And we have. We celebrate the diversity. We've, we've had a chance to talk about this book at our retreat. It was wonderful. And for us, it's about inclusion. It's about respect. It's about really understanding. And it's celebrating the wonderful opportunity we have. Yeah, it's really great. All right, what gets us up in the morning? I mean, I couldn't end with that. <laughs> that would be very bad. So I came up with it. See? Well, for one thing, the very best environment to do our work, the very best teammates to support it, our work. And in academics, there's Palmer <laughs> who was just being put up and Bill Hanlon walking through that place to see about where our new department is going to go. There's the green field. Well, there's the newest approval of the region that happened just last week that will allow us to move into our new space. So that's what the space looks like right now. It's like 1950s. There's the D-wing, there's the D-wing. That's going to that's gonna all be redone. And
And that's what our space will look like. You know, and Holden was asking me, Jim, this is pretty good space. This new space will be better and it'll be in a lead platinum building and it will be absolutely right in the center of things between the sciences, the medical sciences, and the new pavilion and the hospitals. Just where Gil and I thought it ought to be, but we didn't know how we were going to get there. But you know what? We got there by doing good things and others helped us. And that's what we will do. So there's like, that's the, that's the B wing. We're going to take a couple floors of that. There's what it's going to look like. So meet, collaborate, focus. We need to rethink how we do things because we're in hybrid. It's never gone back. And we can do things. We can think it through and we can make ourselves an example for how best to do our work have access to our wet labs and uh, lead the way once we do. Uh, this fellow here, some of you may know him, he's a University of Michigan grad, John C. Brown. He, uh, he, I had a chance to spend a lot of time with him way back when. He's a thought leader. And what he talks about is something called productive friction. You know, it's like anxiety. Too much anxiety is bad. No anxiety is even worse in some ways. When you bring people together in team, there's productive friction. That new space will allow us to have it, and we will be able to focus on the vision that we will all have together. And we will team, we will thank our leadership and our staff and everybody else. And we will come together again the way we did before the pandemic, because this is a picture of our last retreat in June. I've been, I'm absolutely humbled and honored to be able to have the privilege to do this. It was a choice that I made. It was the right choice. And I think each and every one of you are coming together as a team to make that reality. We're going to have the next.